Hello everyone. Let's get started tonight. It is the last day of meeting and today is for the review day. Uh, review for the final. Is there any specific topic, questions that you want to bring to me? Anyone? Let me see if there is anything on the discussion, that final topic discussion. So, um, there is nothing, okay. All right. Um, let me do this thing first. First, let me conclude this class uh, and just to check where are we with respect to our learning. So let me share my screen. Okay, so um, here is the last day and hopefully uh, you guys have a good journey. I have an exciting journey to teach you this uh, concept of computer architecture. We have, uh, we have started from very low level, like, like a micrometer, nanometer level uh, with the transistors, right? And we understood from how we actually build from transistor uh, to logic gates, then build the, from combining the logic gates, how to build a component like multiplexer, decoder, basic ALUs, etc., and then uh, how to combine them into a processor. So our project two is all about that, right? And project three also, conceptually binding that concept uh, from from logic gates to components to the processor. Uh, we haven't uh, done much on the server and computer construction. Uh, that is more like a scope in the computer engineering area. And data center, of course, that's also a computer engineering area, how, how to build up things and stuff like that. Uh, but we had some at least conceptual overview of different type of servers and how they interact with each other, what is their impact on the software programs and what you need to be worried about when you are writing a program, especially a multi-process program which interacts with each other. So these are all different topics that we actually went through together in this semester. Uh, basically, it, uh, it basically started, all these things starts with the process of manufacturing right, where basically these the transistors are built up on silicon. And given that it goes into the motherboard and computer assembly companies, and from there, basically several uh, computer together, uh, it, it built up the data center. Uh, so remember like in our uh, course page, homepage, I have included several videos and I have uh, requested to watch these. Maybe some of you have already watched that at the beginning of the semester. I would also say that watch them again if you if you have already, or if you haven't, you must watch those videos. Those concepts will now probably start making more sense. And it will give you an overall bird's eye view of the computer architecture area and computer hardware area. Uh, so what we have learned, we have basically learned some digital logic, not all of them, but only part related to the processor design. And uh, we know in the horizon, there are some parallel computing system software, those kind of things are coming up in your way. Operating system, maybe you are taking it together with this course. I don't know. But if you haven't, that is another course you need to go and that's pretty much interlinked with computer architecture concept. 
Um, and computer architecture wise, we have a little dive down like a snorkeling level. There are more things to it. There are advanced computer architecture subject and beyond that. So, so you can, if you are interested, you can actually dive down in this path to study more and more on this architecture study. So where to go from here, dive down, explore, a uh, couple of subjects, it may interest you. Uh, um, operating system, it's probably a must subject for you. Probably you have already taken some of you, already taken that, some of you are planning to take it or you are taking it in this semester. So that's very uh, relevant subject, which possibly with computer architecture background, some of the concept there will be much more clear especially around the virtual memory handling uh, those topics and um, there are this language study compiler design which is also related to the architecture um, as well uh, each compiler like i don't know if there is a specific compiler design subject in this department or not but definitely there are language subjects which possibly talks about the compiler the compiler technology's target is to make your high level program create an executable which can be run at the, at the at the processor level and there it has basically two part a front end part and a back end part a front end part of the compiler parses the syntax and semantics of your high level program and generate uh, some information based on what the back end of the compiler generates the assembly code and machine code and that back end is pretty much related directly related with specific hardware unless of course if you are not uh, working on a platform independent language like java java's uh, concept is that this back end is targeted to one and only one machine which is uh, which is the java virtual machine which is a kind of a virtual processor and Java virtual machine interacts with the real machine. So Java compiler, it basically, it takes the high level program and generates something called the bytecode. And it, this bytecode is entered into the, into the virtual machine. But other than that, the compilers like C, C++ compiler, Fortran compiler, there are several other compiled languages. Uh, they basically need to deal with the backend hardware. In fact, if you uh, if you are familiar with the uh, GNU compiler, G++ or GCC, uh, you will see that there are arguments to actually tell what is my target architecture, target processor is, and it can generate code uh, for another platform. Let's say you are using a Microsoft platform, or sorry not Microsoft platform, Intel platform, Intel processor, Intel machine. Um, and you can actually compile to the other processor like a MIPS processor or ARM processor. It's called a cross compilation technique. Uh, so that part, that backend part is much more related to the computer architecture and computer hardware concept. So that's another interesting thing you can explore. Uh, from operating system, you can go to the advanced operating system from computer architecture study, you can go to the computer, advanced computer architecture study, which is CS247, which is the master's level course. Uh, one, another course I would definitely encourage you to pick up that is a parallel processing, very interesting and very relevant in today's scenario. And if you are, if, if you feel interested more into this, this logical area, electrical area, then you can explore some out of the department course as well. One is computer engineering 240, where basically it deals about the computer design. Okay, so, so we talked here at the processor level and maybe some part of the memory level. Now that subject deals with given a processor, how do you build this whole laptop system? Like you need to integrate all this peripheral, how they talk with each other in detail, it's being taught there. Uh, e272 is another interesting subject from electrical department, uh, which uh, is a digital design. As I said, like we just uh, 
learned the digital design part, which is relevant for the processor design. But there are much more to it. Not every digital design in the world is a processor design. There are custom uh, target application uh, circuit for a digital circuit. For example, your uh, like soda can vending machine, where it basically uh, calculate your change and and control the uh, system to give you the change back. Like let's say give you a dollar bill and it returns 50 cents to you. And assuming 50 cents is the can's price. So that kind of circuit is also um, has a specific application and, and good theories how to build an optimized digital circuit. So that's E272, that may be very interesting from you. All right, so that's all from my side. Um, again, it is an exciting semester for uh, me to teach you guys over uh, online. Um, like we started last semester, this semester, hopefully I uh, like smooth out some of the glitches that I have seen last semester. If you have any feedback, just let me know, like how we can run these online courses like much smoother okay all right so with that uh, i kind of conclude this class and again like if you have questions just ask me i'm here um or we can stop early tonight and you go and study for your final exam i wish you good luck on the final exam and hope you will have a good summer break Professor, could you maybe talk a little bit about the final, what we should expect? What's that? Could you maybe tell us a little bit about the final exam, what we should expect? Oh, about the final exam, the question, please, uh, yeah, look at your um, practice uh, final. And will it be added to, will the practice exam be added as points to our grade? No, 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 no. This is just purely for you to give a, a preview of what is coming up in the in the final, and you can so that you can time it better and so on and so forth. And so the questions we should expect will be very similar to the practice final. Um, somewhat, somewhat, in terms of in terms of maybe what you can say in terms of uh, how much time it will need for you to complete those problems and like difficulty as well yes difficulty levels as well so there is this final uh, exam discussion right uh, it has all these uh, detail about how many question and what are the point uh, distribution etc and uh, this uh, practice exam will give you uh, a sneak peek of an experience of that so I'd say like prepare for the final exam, then take that uh, that sample exam and uh, to tune your timing basically and plan your, how do you want to proceed with the answers and so on and so forth. Okay. What else? Um, can, are we limited to only taking it once? Uh, that one, yes. All right, if there is no other question, then let's stop tonight uh, soon. And good, again, good luck on your final exam. All right, thank you. Bye. Thanks, Professor. It was a great semester. Thank you.